To create the box for this project, I'm going to use the matte black cardstock that comes with the collection. I've got beautiful colours here and I've chosen this lovely deep red. So you can quite easily make your box out of this cardstock. It's 180 GSM. And I'm also using some elements from the decorative pad to put overlays to decorate the, the box as well. But you'll see that as we go along. So I've cut my cardstock down ready. So I've got a piece here that's measuring 11 inches by 11 inches. And this is going to be for the drawer because we're going to do the drawer as a double wall drawer to give it a bit more strength. And then this is the piece for the wrap round piece. And this is measuring 8 inches by 11 and 3 quarter inches. So let's start with the drawer itself. So I'll pop that to one side. I'm using my score master here today. You can use your score master or your big score. It doesn't really matter at all. So this is an 11 inch square. I'm working in inches and what you have to remember with your score master or your big score, every time you do a score, the next score line you do, you fold and butt up against because then you get the true measurements. You know, this is why this is the true measurement. This is box lid and the box space. If you look, you've got a little gap down the side here. So to do the drawer itself we're actually going to be working on the box lid side okay so you're going to butt up to the box lid side and do your first line at one and a quarter inches all the way down and then just remember to burnish that and then do the next one as well at one and a half down and just score lightly. You haven't got to score heavily with these projects. Okay, and just give that a nice burnish down. And then butt up again to the edge. And this time you're going to score at five inches. And fold that score line. And then butt that five inch up to the edge there. And then you're going to score at one and a half inches and just fold that score line as well. So that's all your score lines on one side. You're now going to do a quarter turn and do exactly the same again. So one inch. not one inch, one and a half, sorry, one and a half again, and then five inches, this out the way and we'll cut the lines to do our score. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in here, do one corner at a time, so you're just going to snip in and I'm going to just do a little angle and take that piece out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to snip up to the second score line again and then I'm going to take that chunk out and that chunk out so you get it looking like that so let me do that again for you so straight up on the score line itself little wedge out line 
and I'm cutting these actually on the score lines themselves. So this, lay it on the mat, that's what you're going to get. So you now need to do the same on the other two. So you have that now already. Now we can start folding this in and bringing this together. The first thing you're going to need to do is to actually create a box base. So I'm going to bring the glue in. I'm going to use my tacky glue for this. So you're going to bring that in to make your box base. So wet glue on there. If you've got one of the Crafters Companion tape pens, that is perfectly all right as well. But if not, go in with your tacky glue. Put in your two lines together. And then if you just fold that back, you can just peg that so it dries. Because if we get a good stick now, that is the main thing. Going in with your end, giving that a little burnish. The next thing we're going to do is now glue the flaps over and this will give us a double walled box. So glue on here. in and just give that a burnish to disperse the glue. Now this project you can also make with thicker cardstock and I will show you one that I've done with Centura Pearl but I know some of you can't always get hold of heavier cardstock so I wanted to show you that you can quite easily create this project with the paper pads in the collection. down there. I'm not going to put this one over just yet because what I want to do is to create a tie on the edge of the box that we've got here. We're now going to do the wrap around or the case for our drawer. So I've got a piece of cardstock here and this is measuring 11 and 3 quarters by 8 and a quarter inches. I'm going to bring my scoreboard back in. I'm using the Scoremaster here today. And this time you're going to do box base measurements. So for box base, we're going to do the short side first. And when I mean short side, it's this piece here. So this is your long side. This is your short side. So put your short side up to the edge there. And the first thing we're going to do is score at one and a half inches all the way up to the top and burnish that fold. Because I'm using the cardstock out of the pack, I'm not pressing too hard and I would recommend that you don't. Okay, so just score lightly and fold. Then butt your fold line up to the edge of the rail against box base and this time you're going to score at five inches all the way up to the top again giving that a little fold line and then this should be one and a half 
which is just slightly over. If I do a score line on there, I just didn't want you mucking about with eight of an inch, but if we just do a score line up at the one and a half, and then we need to just trim that little piece away that you can see there. So it's about an eighth of an inch. But I didn't want to give you eighth of an inch measurements, so I'm just going to trim that away by hand. So actually you're going to need eight and three eighths of an inch. So that gets trimmed away. And now we're going to score on the long side. So we've got the long side up to our scoreboard. Taking our score um, tool and we're going to go straight in at five inches. that a little fold butt that right the way up and then we're going to go in at one and a half inches right the way up the top and give that a fold and then if I butt that up that should be five inches which it is Okay, so let me put the score master out the way. You don't need that anymore. Do a couple of snip lines. So I'm cutting straight onto the score line, just up to that first score line on both of those. And then I'm just going to take a little slither of a wedge out on the little piece that's in the middle. So let me just pull those pieces away. So it's going to look like that. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Okay, let me move my scissors out of the way. So you've got your outer piece looking like that. Now, normally when we do box construction, this goes in the middle. I don't want that in the middle. I want it on the outside so we get a nice smooth run with our drawer. Okay, so bring that in. That's not very straight cut there at all. Let me just uh, tidy that up. I'm going to put glue on my two tabs. I'm going to glue these on the outside. I'll fold that back. You can see what I'm doing. Let me just pop a peg on there while that just takes. I've used the tacky glue as well so I've got a good grip for construction. I'll just put a peg on there as well for a moment. So you can see that I've actually glued it on the outside then this piece is going to wrap over the top but this will give us a nice smooth run on the inside for our drawer. We haven't got to worry about it catching on anything. Right, that tacky glue is taken off now. And a good idea at this stage is to actually put your drawer in situ because then we can glue the outer two pieces down and the drawer itself gives them some, something firm to do that round. So let's do that now. So glue on the tab. Make sure that's all nicely lined up with the corners. And again, on this side. The edges. Make sure we've got that nice crisp edge going on there. So that is your drawer construction and all I've done is use the cardstock that actually comes in the collection. So quite easily done so if you can't get hold of any you can make this project with that. I have also made one with Centura Pearl. So same measurements again so if you wanted to make it a bit more sturdy you can do with some Centura Pearl. Again I haven't put that down because I've got to decorate. Right, the box is all dry now and I've gone round and I've put some of the pattern paper from the paper collection just round the edges here and I've done the same here on 
the card one that I've done so just showing you how it goes and this is the little handle that we're going to create to go to pull our drawer out of our box so this is the little handle we're going to make now and I'm going to show you how to do that and this is using that um, lovely velvet ribbon that came in the first collection but you may already have some in your crafty stash so let's see what we're going to do so if I open this out oh I've got one more mat there to put on and I've got my card here already let me tell you the measurements of the decorative edge because even though this is the cardstock and it's not a sturdy by the time you add all these extra layers of cardstock onto your project they help to make it stronger and firmer as well so the ones that go all the way around the edge are measuring four and seven eighths of an inch by one and three eighths of an inch so when you pop them on this wants to go on the front of the drawer so when you pop them on you can see that lovely red round the edge as well so I've just sort of taken an eighth of an inch off or just a little bit less okay and then obviously on this one I matted and layered it with some of the pattern cardstock as well so that's the one for my front drawer and then I've got my card here this is the card base that I'm going to stick then onto the top of my project. So again, this is going to give it some more stability as well, because that's going to go on the top. Um, and this is where I'm going to put my lovely fireplace scene here and just sort of a wishing from our house to yours on a Christmas. So that, but I'm not going to stick that on yet until I've actually decorated my card on the inside. So I'm going to pop that to one side. So let's look at this drawer and how we're going to make our drawer mechanism. I've got a cropper dial here, but obviously it only goes in so far. So I can't get it all the way down to where I want it to be. I want it down here. So what I'm going to do is fold this over, use my cropper dial. I'm eyeballing this, as I say, not um, measuring. But again, as you can see, I'm going to struggle to get this halfway to where I want it to be without really struggling. Let me just see. See, it's going to be very hard to do. So let me show you the easiest way to do this. We've got the flap we haven't glued down for a purpose. I'm actually going to cut or punch my holes in here. So let me go ahead and punch a couple of holes in here. So one there, and one there, okay. Then when I fold this over with the pokey tool, I can then make a mark where this one's going to be and where that one's going to be. So what I'm doing is I'm going inside, that's the piece that we've got punched, I'm going with my pokey tool and just making a hole. So then I'll turn it the other side, I've got my holes there. And I need them a bit bigger for my eyelets. So I'm putting eyelets on. If you haven't got eyelets, don't be too concerned about having your eyelets. I'm making a big enough hole to take my eyelets as well. And these are your little eyelets. They're little metal things. They, if you've got a hole um, punch like this, you might have a freestanding one, in which case you'll be, probably be able to do this with no problem at all. I've only got the cropper dial here today. Okay, so these are your eyelets that are going to go inside there and they're going to make it a bit more sturdy that this handle's going to stand all the, the pulling around. Next thing I need to do is glue my pattern paper on. So let me glue that on. I'm going to glue that on first. You're probably thinking you're covering up your holes, Dawn. Don't worry because we've got the holes the other side, remember. So just pop that on and give that a good burnish down. And actually at the same time, I can also glue and get it out. It's such a snug fit having this doubled walled effect. I can also go ahead and glue 
this in place. So just putting some glue on the inside there and folding that flap down. Okay, and then again going in with your pokey tool just through there to make that space through that pattern paper. And again on the other one. Okay, making sure that's not moved at all. I'm just giving that a good wiggle round so it's big enough to take my eyelet. I wanted to show you how to do this just so when you're at home you too can recreate this project. So then pushing my eyelet in, I don't think my hole's quite big enough. No, it's not. I need to make it a little bit bigger. You see, it's surprising with the pattern paper and the, the cardstock I'm using for this in the red only being 180 GSM, it's surprising how sturdy it actually is. And you think now we've got that layer, we've got two layers of the card and this layer, so you've got that times three already on the wall of the drawer. Come on, you can go through there. Just pushing that through. No, it's not wanting to play. So let me go with my scissors. Now it should go in. That's it. Minus one. And I've gone with the yellow ones here. Don't be too hung up. The ones on the other project are just plain metal ones. So whatever you've got in your crafty stash, really. Okay, so I've gone with yellow. So I've got the gold and the red. And then I'm just going to use this to set my eyelets, just to give them that finishing touch. Now, if you don't have one of these machines and you want to make this sort of handle, you can do. All I would suggest is cut a couple of discs of a bit stronger card just to pop on the inside to take the pulling to and fro, if you like. So that's our eyelets on, all nice and set. I've got this lovely yellow, I'm going to go for the yellow with the red, lovely yellow velvet ribbon here. So this has got a bit of sticky on the end. I'm just going to trim that bit of sticky off the end of there, out the way. And then with my pokey tool, that's stuck to me nail, it's that sticky. With my pokey tool, I'm just going to poke this through the hole of the drawer. I've got it on the inside. I'm going to lay it back to one side. And then I'm going in with some really strong double-sided tape and putting over the top of that. Just let me put this in place and then I'll show you what I've done because I'm a bit all over the place with this at the moment. There we go. So I've put my tape then over there. I'm going to do the same again. So roughly measure where or how big you want your handle to be. You're better off to cut a little bit too much rather than not enough. So again, poking that through the hole. Pulling that out the other side. Okay, I'm just going to snip that off because it's just a little bit too long. Lay that flat again a bit more double sided tape on there because that will hold all that in place so that's given us our little drawer effect so when we pop it in there we've got something to pull the drawer open to show those little treats and things inside there now uh, we want to tidy this up because that doesn't look very nice, does it? So I'm going to take the backing off this double-sided tape and I've cut myself 
another strip of red card just to go on the inside of here so just measure your box on the outside and I've cut myself a strip that's going to fit nice and snug on the inside there so again with the tacky glue remember every time you're putting a layer of this Kalal glue as well you're putting another layer basically of adhesive which is also giving you some more strength to your project just go in with your bone folder and just give that a little rub down make sure the glue is nice and dispersed so that is our handle all constructed so that can go inside our project so it's starting to sh take shape that's the card ready to go on the top so the next thing I've got to do is to die cut all my elements and decorate the inside of my card the next stage of the project is to get all your little die cut elements all ready so I've cut myself a second fireplace to pop over the top I've got all my garlands all cut out the little plate for Santa's cookies and his drink and even down it's in here somewhere the tiny little carrot if I can pick it up no there we go let me pick that off my hand the tiny little carrot there ready for Rudolph you know this is like doll's house putting everything inside your doll's house this is just such a lovely project to do and what I would suggest doing is get all your elements die cut out first ready to go I've stamped myself a greeting to go on the inside of the card that says from from our family to yours because I think this is perfect to give to neighbours you know as a little Christmas gift you can put a little few make few makes in there you know do some homemade truffles or biscuits or you could quite easily just buy some biscuits and pop in there or some little sweets it's just a little thank you or a little gift for Christmas I've created the fireplace this is the back of the die I'm going to show you how we're going to do that and then these are the tiny little logs and the flames and I've coloured all these bits with my spectrum white alcohol pens so you can really go to town on this I've made a little Christmas card here to go on the mantelpiece you know so there's lots you can do so they're all die cut ready to go got my card here and let me show you then how we're going to die cut the fireplace itself so I've taken I've already die cut this I've taken a piece of the cardstock out of the cardstock pad and I've done this so it fits in with a sort of quarter of an inch gap all the way around so we so you've got that nice frame to it all I think it just looks lovely with the frame around it so the cardstock I use for this is measuring nine inches by four and a half inches and I did my pencil line to start with you can see probably see the pencil line. I've done my pencil line where I needed to score to start with and then what you do is you take your die and you'd have seen this on the other videos and if you look at your main die you've got your two little nicks in the corner there and they will go on where your pencil line is so so we pop those it's going to be the half fold of the card but you're not going to score it because we don't want these pieces of the fireplace with bends in them so if you do it as a pencil line first and to get the paper the wallpaper and the carpet all matching exactly how you want it what I did was I cut my paper pad from my pattern paper pad I've cut again two of my squares so these are measuring quarter of an inch down again so I've got that nice frame so these are measuring four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches that's both of those and because the Gemini has got the power behind it and I'm only going through two layers of the cardstock here the 180 GSM I laid them on like that and I passed it through my machine in one go and it's cut it out absolutely perfectly don't throw these elements away 
because I'm going to show you how we're going to use these. So that went through my Gemini, as you do with all your other dies. You've seen that in the other videos. So let's now bring this into our card. So then, once you've die cut, put your score lines in. Do your folds. Bring this all forward so you get some nice folds in here. I'm just bending that down. So you've got all those folds going on. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. And then we can start attaching our wallpaper and our base. So let me just glue those bits on because I just want to show you how I'm going to use the other bits just to fill in so it looks nice and professional. We don't have big gaps at the back. Just using some all-purpose. So I'm just going to attach my wallpaper. Nice regal striped wallpaper there. I've not gone too busy with the wallpaper because uh, we're going to add lots and lots of lovely embellishments. You know, that's the great thing about this. It is like doll's house making. And I've really enjoyed the fact that you can die cut all the elements out and build it up. So pop the carpet on there as well. Now you saw that I cut another fireplace. Okay to go over the tops. I've already stamped that so actually that can go on. I'm going to put that on with some tacky glue just because I don't want that moving about. So putting that on. If you've got a Xyron machine, Xyron machine is absolutely marvellous. I haven't got one so I think I will have to invest in one because it would save me a lot of time. So as you can see it's starting to come together already just bend those folds as we do normally can you see you're getting that lovely th 3d effect going on here at this stage i'm going to now glue it into my card base so remember that's going to be my top I'm not going to attach my card base to my box yet that's going to be the last thing i'm going to do before i decorate so i'm just going to put some tacky glue on here so i get a quick grab making sure I'm right up to the edges on this and the best way I find to do it is to line it up where you want it get that half fold in your card come down smoothing that all the way lifting that up and that's your first piece down okay let's bring that forward that's it there we go so that's stuck on there so we've got that nice let me just slide that over a little bit i think let's just slide that over i'm not quite in the center there it did a little bit of a movement so let me move that exactly where i'm going to have it there we go that's exactly where i want it to be so i've got that nice edge all around and then the same with the bottom piece. Bringing that over. Giving that a rub. By rubbing it, you're dispersing the glue. It's not all staying in that same area. So you can see now how that's looking nice and 3D. Now... From cutting that, we've got these elements left. And I personally think if you glue them behind, it just helps to finish everything off. So you don't see gaps. We don't see the white card at the back. So I'm just going to fill these in. So I'm going to pop that behind there to fill in where the carpet goes. I'm just going to go in with my poke it all and press that down carefully okay and there should be another piece of green somewhere probably in my box so I shall find that and then the piece when I actually cut the fireplace itself that plain piece of beige 
I'm going to use that to stick at the back for my fireplace but to get that in the right position I've got this bit of the the um, wallpaper here so if I stick this in first I know when I put my fireplace bit in the fire itself it's going to be in exactly the place I want it to be so I'm just going to slide that round the back there and just position that where I want that to be which is just there nicely okay and another thing I did just before popping my fireplace in I cut myself a strip of just some white cardstock and I'm going to do a little skirting board because I just think that just finishes it off this is what I'm saying about you know really decorating it up you know this is what makes these projects so nice you can go as far or not as you want the choice is yours so I'm just going to pop this in there let me put that in the right place I've got my skirting board in there and I'm going to put a bit on this side doesn't matter if it overlaps because I'm going to be putting my fireplace over, or my fire over the top of that okay so just position that it, it is so satisfying to see it all come together and I think you will agree you will enjoy doing this the same so this is my fire I have already attached my logs and my flames and I would recommend doing that because I think it's easier then all I'm going to do is go behind the fireplace and I, I know exactly where it needs to be because I've got that gap from where we had the wallpaper I'm just pressing that down carefully without disturbing I shaped all the frames the flames and the log and I don't want to disturb that at all so you can see already how that is starting to come together I'm going to finish that off and then I'm going to come back to you and we'll do the last bit of attaching it to the box and the top decoration. You can see now how the inside of the card is coming together and I think this is just the lovely part of it. You know, as you're adding all those elements and creating the scene and I think that's what you're all enjoying about the dimensional dies. I wanted to share with you just how to give the little cat and dog here to make them a little bit more 3D because obviously if we just lay them on the card like that they're not going to look very special at all so what I've done is I've got some sa same colour of the pattern paper that I've used for the carpet and all I'm going to do is cut a very thin strip and I probably don't even need it that long fold that in half and pop some glue on there on the white side okay and if I stick half of that onto the back of the dog so you've just got that fold like that you can see that okay and then what we can do is we can position him where we'd like him so let's bring him down here a little bit Okay, so we can bring him there because then when the card folds flat he's going to fold flat but actually can you see how nice and 3D he looks whereas you see if I just laid that the cat down like that it doesn't look anything at all so let's do the same with the cat as well I just think it it just makes them look a bit more 3D um, and it just finishes off that scene doesn't it you know the nice cat and dog laying by the fire enjoying Christmas Eve we've got we've got the carrot there ready for Rudolph when Santa brings him down the chimney we've got the cookies on the fireplace waiting you know everything has been thought out with these dies and that's why I think you're going to enjoy building up the scene so let's put the cat a little bit closer to the fire because cats like to warm themselves by the fire so that is the scene all created. You can see how that little cat and dog there 
and by having the green the same as the carpet you can't actually see the join even though the pattern's not quite the same you can't really see it. I'm looking quite closely myself actually but I popped my sentiment on there because that's going to be the inside I've my silicon gel I've used my um, my 3d gel to attach the little card and that on there still a little bit wet but anyway we're going to fold down just make sure that card stays where I want it to be for a bit so I'm just making sure it's going to be where I want it to be yeah okay so that is our, our card front I've stuck on the die cut letters the words I put on there happy holidays so this can now be attached to our box. I've got a ribbon here as well. So when we've attached it, we can keep the card closed. But I think this is just a great project for, for neighbours and things. You know, sometimes you want to say thank you. Perhaps it's thank you for feeding the cat while we've been away this year. Or, you know, and Christmas gets an expensive time and we don't always want to do gifts because it can get out of hand but by making an extra special card here with that little drawer that you can put some bought chocolates, you can put some homemade chocolates, you can put some Christmas biscuits. It just finishes it off nicely. I'm going to tie a bow on here for a minute just to hold that in place because I've got one more little finishing touch I want to add to my project. And I think you will agree it just adds that extra special finish so that is my ribbon what I've done is I've die cut those poinsettias they are absolutely stunning one pass through the Gemini I haven't even had to emboss you've got all that vein detail on the petals themselves so I'm going to pop that in the corner here I've got some of the leaves as well so I will bring those in and a little twig piece here that I've got in silver so let me just attach that for that final finishing flourish to the project and this is where you can go to town with how you decorate yours to make it personal to you and who you're giving it to and I think this you know I was receiving a little gift like this from my neighbour I would be absolutely delighted because you can see they've taken some time and care and it's just nice to say Merry Christmas to the neighbours isn't it or to friends you don't see very often you know it just keeps it a lovely gift to have so I'm putting some of those lovely poinsettia leaves on there just to finish that off even the leaves one pass through the Gemini all those veins are on there in fact I don't think I'm going to put the silver on there because we've got the gold perhaps we will oh I don't know let's put a bit of silver on there I wasn't going to let's tuck it under this piece right at the back it is Christmas after all isn't it and we like to have a bit of bling and that last little leaf this is where you can go to town add as many leaves petals flowers decoration you want so that is our project finish and if we open the drawer up move that out of the way I've got some of these tiny little cupcake cases and I found you can get about nine in here so I think if you're doing little homemade truffles or sweets these just make it just makes it a special little gift you know these are great for say teachers gifts even you know that keeps that inexpensive at the end of the year you know if you're doing stalls for charity to, for fundraising for church or schools or anything great little gifts that have that fundraising touch and if I bring the other one in here this is the one I've done out of the card so this one is done using the paper and the plain paper from the paper pads this one I've used the base I've used the Centura Pearl same project I've used a different sentiment on there and if you open it up there you've got all that detail going on again I've got my cat and dog 3d on there and when you open the drawer that's just ready 
for some Christmas treats. So I hope you've enjoyed the project. I thoroughly enjoyed the project and you will enjoy using your dimensional dies to create these wonderful scenes.